Hello, in today's video, I'm going to digitize and embroider the San Francisco 49er hat. And this is 3D Puff here. And I'm not gonna do too much talking here. I kinda wanna show you my workflow, how I work. And today, I do wanna highlight one special tool and technique, which I'll talk about in a bit. Here, I'm just tracing the letter S and the F for 3D Puff, and I'll just let it play. And if there's anything specific, I'll kind of chime in. And one thing you see here is I broke up the S like in four or five pieces here. And that's just to kind of get my stitch angles back in place just so I could have kind of like a, a smooth flowing S. And this part of the S, I change it up at the very end so you'll see how I do it on the top right, I kind of change it up. And one thing about 3D Puff is I think really the time consuming part and the more challenging part is actually sequencing it to the point where you don't have no unnecessary cuts. So I'm always thinking of ways to avoid any cuts. And of course, I'm, I'm going to be using my run stitches to avoid cuts and I'm putting my run stitches at the very end. So right now I'm just tracing everything and some of my tracing I change at the very end. And then this is where the thinking part really starts. Once I start bringing in my run stitches because I wanna know what goes first, what goes second, and so on. And here we'll just kind of fast forward, but I'm just working on my sequence and making sure everything is flowing the way it's supposed to be. And once I get to the border, the black border here, this is the one that I really want to talk about. So you'll see me here trace, I'm just going to put like a single line around and trace it as perfect as can be. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a fill stitch. What I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make a hole inside and that's just going to kind of give me my border here. So this is kind of like a new technique that I've been using and super, super helpful, especially in this type of situation where I have my border kind of going in all different locations. And the secret sauce here is the magic knife. When I put the magic knife here, if you have Wilcom, you have this super, super special tool right here. It's called the magic knife. Once I put that magic knife, it breaks my background into its correct stitch angles. And here on the border, you'll see where I, I have just a fill stitch, but at the very end, I'll change it to a satin stitch on the borders. But for right now, once I put that magic knife, okay, it gives me the correct stitch angles that I need. And if I need to change anything, I could easily change things. But overall here, okay, I got, I got three sections of this black border. Eventually I'm gonna turn it gold, but right now it's black border.
So here we could see it play. Watching the replay, this is where you can catch little small errors right here. So overall, everything's looking good the way it should be. This is the bottom part. This is gonna be the border. So we'll make it gold. Then right after this, we'll put on the puff. Overall, we have five cuts, which is pretty good for a design like this. And once we got everything good to go, we go ahead, we take it to the machine, we stitch it out. And to me, the best part of digitizing is this part, actually seeing everything stitch out and just verifying that everything gets covered the way it's supposed to get covered. If there are any changes or any mistakes or anything that we gotta fix, I like to make notes of it because Especially in a design like this, it's rare that you're gonna catch everything on the first sample. But overall, everything so far is looking nice and clean here. I'm getting a nice border. And we have a solid border here, which is gonna be perfect when we put our 3D puff right on top of it. All right, but you just wanna make sure here that everything lines up nice and clean. And so far, everything's looking good. This is our goal, and now it's time to put our 3D puff. And here I'm using three millimeter dense puff. And these type of designs where you have a lot of capping movement direction, I think it's very important to have the, the correct 3D puff because if you're just using kind of like craft 3D puff, it, it might not give you the, the clean, crisp results that you're looking for. So this design overall, I had about 6,400 stitches, which is relatively pretty good. All right, something like this, this type of design, we definitely wanna keep our stitches as minimum as possible. And you can see here how the S, I kind of broke it up into pieces, but overall it's looking clean. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for sharp, clean stitch angles. And really that's what I'm seeing here. Everything is adding up. And we'll see right now when we take off the foam. And once I remove the foam, you could kind of see where I got to do some cleanup here. There's some foam sticking out, but overall my yellow border is looking super, super clean. All we need to do is push a little bit of this foam inside and we'll check the backside here. Of course, I always like to check the backside, make sure bobbin, tension, everything is clean and we're looking nice and sharp. 
all right so once i clean it up bam we are looking super super clean here this is a super zoom in here all right leave your questions and comments down below and i'll see you on the next one peace out everybody